Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hi there, guys. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Uh, we will start with just about a minute at recording button. Okay, guys, welcome. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Kenny Simon here with Errante, and you are on the webinar uh, that happens every day. Um, and today is the uh, every day at, the, at 3 o'clock my time from Wednesday to Friday. The uh, rest of the day is Mondays and Tuesdays at 4 o'clock Cyprus time. Okay, so today is the 6th of August, 2020. So today we are talking uh, a lot about about uh, GBP, basically, um, GBP crosses, and one uh, pair that I have actually analyzed a little bit more, and it has alerted me of clear downtrend because of the uh, pump up of, um, of uh, bullishness by the GBP and the bearishness of the euro, then it comes to euro GBP. So today I have, um, I have released a signal on Euro GBP. Let me just show you where you guys can find that signal on a very interesting platform called Trading Dot. Trading Dot has 15 over a thousand members. Uh, it, it it originated from Poland. Uh, the owner is Polish. Um, okay, give me a second. Second guys, let me just connect to trading dot as well. Something's not going on there. A second. Trading dot. Just one second, guys. Okay, let's uh, carry on. Uh, so I am trading on a live account of Errante at the moment. Uh, it's uh, one of the VIP H account. Uh, has got the lowest uh, spreads, as well as uh, you know no charges on the commissions. So I'm using that account at the moment to actually trade um, in the for the use of my mentorship program. Okay, as well to mentor uh, traders. And here, let me just. Trading dots not coming out. It's got to do a connection, I guess. Hi there, guys. Hi, Suguna. Hi, Sugu. Welcome. Okay, guys. So uh, we will talk a, a lot about um, uh, GBP crosses, as I have mentioned, and uh, with that also, also use some Euro crosses like Euro USD, Euro GBP. So as I've mentioned earlier, on Euro GBP is what we're looking at uh, right now. So let me just get rid of this and that one there. And now, since I'm connected, oh, everything is going crazy at the moment. Okay, so here I have got, I've shared uh, on Trading Dot. For those who uh, don't know Trading Dot, you can you guys can just go on to tradingdot.com, register for free. You've got no charges, nothing like that. Um, you can type in Ken Simmons as mine. You can actually follow my trades as well that are on Trading Dot. It makes it easier to monitor uh, my trades as well. You can you know it's it's connected to my real life account at Errante, so you can actually take a look uh, from time to time uh, to follow me and follow other traders as well. Make connections with them. Uh, there are lots of traders all around the world, um, but mainly from Europe. So for some reason, it is really very slow. So uh, here, if you if you type and go into my, I mean, type into trading.com, register and go into my uh, profile, Ken Simmons, you'll see all the um, uh, sharings that I have as, as well, whether they are post or they are trade ideas. Uh, what I have shared here in the morning is the, uh, how you call that, the um, uh, what has actually gone on since the morning, my time where you can actually see Euro GBP has maintained its bearishness. Uh, and that hence one of the reason why I've actually picked the Euro GBP as well, because you've got two arrows uh, right here. I'll be sharing uh, more of this indicator, uh, this heat map as well that has been used by a very big uh, company for hedge funds and, uh, and big traders for close to about four 14 years actually. So I am merging with them to actually get some feeds uh, to uh, connect 
uh, with them to apply my strategies as well onto the heat maps. Okay, so um, bear with me. Very soon I'll be um, giving out uh, the software links where you can get uh, what do you call that? Uh, you can subscribe to the to this software as well in a very very low pr price, under twenty dollars per month, and you can actually have this very unique um, uh, heat map as well. Okay, so. We're still sorting out some things at the moment. So here, for example, ah, you guys cannot see my screen. Let me just, okay, give me a second. I'm not aware that you guys cannot see my screen. Give me a second, guys. Let me just screen share. All right. Okay, what about now? Is it okay? Can you see my screen now? Ah, okay. So now it's okay, yeah, brilliant, good. So that's the screen there. This is on trading dot. I've shared that and you can see that's the excerpt or the screenshot of the uh, heat map there, just a small part of the heat map. Um, okay. All right, you guys can see my screen. Good. So when you are on uh, Trading Dot, you know you just go on to Ken Simmons. You can see uh, I have shared the Euro GBP. So the Euro GBP uh, together with my strategy with the ABCD bearish pattern as well. I've given the signal of selling it at 0 0.8990 and then uh, you can take profit at 0 0.8960. It's just to test the market a little bit, to test the trend of Euro GBP with about 30 pips or so, so that you know that you will risk as well 30 pips only uh, for the for the beginning until the, until the um, trend picks up. You see, so now at the moment we just, uh, we can actually see what's going on here on the four hour chart, uh, but I will just tell you how I've analyzed the market. Uh, I've seen that uh, it's got all these uh, upward type movement, of course, but then uh, together with the signals and the heat map, uh, it looks like there's a big buildup of uh, sellers in the Euro versus the GBP, mainly because of uh, all these positive news uh, on GBP as well. Now we see that the GBP uh, with the uh, BOE asset purchase facilities, the numbers were bigger. Uh, we see that uh, a lot of things uh, that has been um, communicated by the Bank of England uh, showed a lot of positivity as well, because the government said that uh, the governor, sorry, not the government, the, the governor of the Bank of England have actually mentioned that negative rates are in the toolbox, but he prefers QE. So what that means is QE, if you listen about all these uh, funny words, like QE, it stands for quantitative easing and all that kind of thing. Um, that actually just means that they want to print more money. So if they want to print more money and more money goes into the market, more liquidity, that would increase uh, the, the rates. Okay, so that would then be increasing the uh, probability of um, pound going up. And hence the reason we see that uh, pound, if we just grab one of, one of it, let's say, GBP, okay, let's go here, GBP USD, for example, yeah. Okay. Uh, you could see that the, how the reaction was, okay, you've got a, a, a sort of like a J kind of pattern going upwards. You can see that everything is uh, quite strongly to the upside for GBP. Then we go on to the next GBP cross, let's say GBP AUD, right? You can see that, uh, the build up there as well has actually started and then GBP CAD, uh, you can see the same sort of pattern as well, GBP NZD, you can see again, it's all to the upside. So uh, from the heat map, it gives me a perspective of what is going on rather than me uh, going to one by one onto the chart, onto one uh, asset, uh, one, um, how you call that, uh, pair after one and then uh, doing it manually. So hence the reason I like to see everything um, from a bird's eye perspective on one screen. And hence the reason I need to look into a tool like the heat map, but it doesn't mean that I am totally 
um, sort of religiously follow only the heat map because I need to actually compare one heat map to the other heat map, but also to make my own analysis of the trend of whatever that I am looking at. So with the Euro GBP, it is still strongly on the downside because of GBP still is very bullish. Okay, so Euro is uh, comparatively to the GBP, Euro is on the downside. So here, when I looked at the Euro GBP on the daily chart, uh, what I see is that it's not really clear on the trend for the downside, like what the heat maps are actually predicting. Uh, heat maps, of course, you know, certain heat maps like the one I'm actually using uh, and uh, uh, combining it with the others, uh, they are, you know, reasonably accurate to actually come up with uh, early warning signs or or a trend that is much, much earlier going to happen and hasn't happened yet. Uh, but here, it doesn't reflect that as yet, uh, but there is a possibility of uh, price coming downwards. Now, what has actually happened on the daily chart for Euro GBP is that we had all the selling pressure and we've got an A here, B here, C here, and then D to the downside, you see. So there uh, definitely uh, the uptrend has actually weakened uh, to towards a downward type movement because it was, it was going up all the way, as you guys know, with all the Euro crosses, especially with Euro USD and various others, they were all um, really going up all the Euro crosses. But then what happened is that it created um, a sort of a V. This is not a very clear V uh, for the Euro GBP, but uh, in, a, in a pair like Euro USD, the V was very clear. That means that whole valley there V for value, obviously, um, is a really clear uh, showing us a probability of a um, double top pattern. And that double top pattern looks like it is actually forming with, uh, you know, wicks at the very top, which means that it does not have too much power anymore to go upwards. Okay, and it had it uh, to the way uh, to, to the downward type move with a bearish candle as well. And that V there is not too bad. Okay, even though you've got all these candles above all the three lines and all that, uh, but what I see as well with the Euro USD, for example, just to give you a bit of an idea, because of the Euro crosses, because Euro GBP is very correlated to uh, Euro USD as well. So if we go on to oscillator, uh, which is the stochastic, right here, um, you can see that we have got similar, uh, that this peak and this peak, they are similar. But then if we go on to this peak, sli it's slightly higher. The second one is slightly higher upslope. Okay, and uh, with that, basically it means that there is a divergence between that movement of price with the stochastic and that does then um, show that uh, the reversal may actually happen because this was a, an uptrend. So if you see a divergence, that means that the, the whatever trend that you're looking at, there is a potential for it to actually reverse. So um, now it is still the same when I look into the heat maps as well onto my other screen that uh, we can see more and more uh, euro going downwards, okay? So uh, euro is going downwards uh, except for euro CAD. Uh, so that actually means that CAD is a bit stronger, uh, okay? Sorry, the euro uh, CAD is really weak, maybe because of the oil prices. So if I look at all the euro crosses at the moment, it's all going very red, uh, meaning that euro generally or majority in uh, a majority of the pairs, uh, euro is actually uh, euro is actually weaker than the rest of the pairs. Now, GBP on the other hand is stronger and uh, it's got a lot of volume as well. Because if I have showed you, um, let me just give me a second. Uh, let's say, for example.
onto what I have shared with you guys, um, you can see that the bars are actually long. So if the bars are, strong, uh, are long, uh, like this, for example, that means that the participation of the buyers or the liquidity level and the volume level are very high. Okay, so even if it is green only and the bar is really small, that does not give us enough confidence uh, to actually um, look into the trend because the trend wouldn't actually be very clear if the bar are not long indicating the participation of the buyers or the sellers. Okay, so the longer the bar, the better. Uh, if it is uh, too short or very little, let's say the bar highlighted, that means the participation of the traders are not enough, insufficient, because the trend only gets stronger with participation. That means activity, liquidity, volume of trade, and they are actually active. Uh, if it is just bullish uh, because of some trading by some big uh, traders, it's not enough. It's not going to maintain that trend. Okay, so here uh, we can see that, uh, let's say like this one here that I have actually shared, we've only got one arrow here, which indicates GBP and ZD bullish. And then we don't have an arrow here because this column here stands for the European American session. The one here is Asian session. So with the Euro GBP, the trend is much more solid because we have got the arrow here and arrow here, meaning that both sessions, we've got a carry on of trend and traders maintaining the selling of Euro GBP from the Asian session right up to the European and American sessions, which is a, always a very good sign. And we can also see that the bars, you know, pretty standard, it's really strong on the GBP sign. So this is a very good sign. And then we've got two arrows right there and then the bar is reasonably long as well. So this is, uh, these are good signs, okay, at the moment. So let's go back now to what we have seen and talked about about on the Euro GBP. Now, Euro GBP at this moment of time, of course, um, you know, it's scaring some of the traders, you know, looking at uh, correction going up and things like that. But uh, the correction is not very, um, it's indicative of a correction, that's all. It's not really an indication of a change of trend, and various others, because even on the uh, one hour chart, you see the participation of bears are just simply too strong. For the buyers to now get over all these bears, it is just simply very, very difficult, okay? So uh, also because you see we have got a very strong bearish area right here, which is the 9030 area, which is close to the 9020 area as well. Now only if it goes above and above and then breaks that one as well, then we need to be very careful. At this stage, it is pretty low. Um, at, at the strength of the buyer. So we're not really, we don't really need to be really concerned at this stage of a change of trend because it's not enough to show uh, that it is a change of trend. Now, the good thing though is uh, on the four hour chart, we have got a potential A here, B here, C, which this still maintains at this moment of time. Uh, we've only, if we look at it from the four hour chart, that upward type move, it is building up, but it's probably building up. Um, comparatively to that mother candle there or that mother candle there. So what that actually means is that uh, if it were to go up, it probably could go up following that long mother candle right up to about another 20, 25 to 30 pips more because of the length of that uh, bullish mother candle. We've got one right here, but this one here is much longer. Um, so it's the same here as well. So we do have, yes, it may be a corrective move, but um, in my guess, you know, because this is on the four hour chart itself, uh, we can see that uh, there is a potential to go up for another 30 pips or so, um, uh, 30 to 35, let's say pips, also, and uh, after that, um, uh, there may be some correction that is due again. Okay, so yeah, and this one here as well. I mean, if we keep scrolling, we sort of see a standard number of pips. Uh, you know, uh, this one here is a little bit on the wrong side. 100 plus pips on that one there, but again, we are seeing loads of resistance as well. Um, okay. Uh, 
um, high fund me. Uh, we we don't look at it like that. You know, we, we don't say that EU is going up and then EU versus all the pairs is all a buy, you know, it, it because it's got different personality with different ones. Uh, what I have actually said is GBP is uh, really actively on the upside. So Euro is actually on the downside. So if uh, we are looking at Euro GBP, um, if I, if you have actually um, uh, followed us uh, from the earlier on, the signal for Euro GBP is to the downside. So that is for the sell. So Euro GBP is for the sell. Let me just uh, show you again the uh, trade idea that I have actually shared. Um, it is on trading dot. Let's say on trading dot, then you can see that I have shared the sell Euro GBP. GBP's bullishness is dragging the euro down. This is what I have actually shared. So um, Euro GBP has got details of the sell at 0 0.8990, TP 8960, and SL 0 0.9030. So um, EU, for example, I didn't actually say it's going up as well. So if you want to look at it, uh, you can actually see it for yourself. Um, as I've mentioned as well, there's a V. So the V there indicates a double top. Double top is a potential reversal uh, sort of um, uh, pattern that actually would most probably pull the euro downwards, not upwards. Uh, so euro in general, it looks like uh, there's potential for a drop, but uh, we want to always be careful. There is no such thing as, uh, you know, uh, if it is looking like it's bullish now, you need to compare uh, what you're looking at uh, on which time frame with other time frame to actually get an overall view. Okay, so there is no such thing of uh, EU going up and then uh, we think that, uh, you know, we just have to actually uh, buy or sell accordingly to that. We need to compare. We need to always look at other pairs. We need to look for the location of the trade. It's not, uh, it's not just the trend, the location of the, of the trade. So let me explain a little bit about that because this is very important for traders not to lose, okay, too much and then get... Uh, get into a floating trap or uh, being stopped out and things like that. So location for me, uh, for example, is we, even though we look at all these, all these uh, trend, for example, to the downside, I need to look at, let's say selling pressure, but I need to also look to the left and to look at whether or not where the prices is now. Let's say now I'm looking at Euro GBP. Okay, so let's say you just come into the system, uh, just came into your, your computer system and onto your platform and you are wondering uh, what should you do with the Euro GBP. So with the Euro GBP, let's say um, I have shared my opinion as well that Euro GBP is quite bearish. Um, then uh, we have various tools to actually look into selling the Euro GBP. One of it is the pattern ABC. CD, which actually shows a potential for prices to fall. But if you're looking at the current price itself, you should be using the magic of price action on its own. Okay, so this is number one. Number one, look at the current price. Current price is 9007. 9007 is trapped between 9020 at the top and also 9000, which is 9000 uh, as well, because then we are looking at psychological levels, right? Psychological numbers. So we know that, uh, you know, we are trapped in between that. Now, the other thing as well is uh, we need to combine various strategies, various approaches. So here we do have a potential A here, B here, C here, and then B to the downside. Um, but when we evaluate the daily chart, um, the daily chart itself, you know, it's a little bit unpredictable because it's uh, sort of sort of made this whole curve downwards already, which means that the upward tight movement has sort of lowered and then it is heading to the downside. Uh, but because I'm using some softwares and heat maps and things like that, which I share with all the traders, uh, it is signaling more bearishness for the Euro GBP. And true enough with all the GBP that is going on at the moment, GBP news that's going on, it is mostly bullish uh, because the bank governor 
of uh, England, uh, the bank governor of England, or bank of England's governor, sorry, uh, they, uh, he has actually said that he prefers QE, which is quantitative easing. He prefers um, printing more money, basically. So with that, hence the reason it is showing more positivity at the moment for GBP. So GBP is positive. If you combine that with euro, then that means you are selling the euro and you are buying the GBP. So euro GBP is the downside move. I feel, uh, I think that it is uh, going to be building up much more. If we go into the one hour chart, let's say for the euro GBP, you can see that the whole movement has, has happened. And what happened is that if we're trading using pattern as well, we need this to go up somewhere, right? So what you can then do is get your Fibonacci. This is on the one hour chart. We are still looking at Euro GBP. Pull this one all the way down. And you can see that it's approaching the 38.2. If we take that to the higher level here, you can see that it hasn't gone on to the 38.2. So uh, you have got a possibility of a retracement at 38.2%, a possibility of retracement at the 50% as well, and also the 61.8. Okay, so this is how far it could potentially go, even to the 78.6. Okay, so um, what I will then do is always to look at the left. Ah, oh, wait, give me a second. We'll pull that one down again, and we want to also mark the 78.6 right there. Okay, uh, also the 38.2 right there. Okay, this is based on Fibonacci, let's say. Okay. So now you've got four lines. You, you, could, you guys could see the four horizontal um, yellow lines, right? These are your Fibonacci lines. These are also Fibonacci lines telling you that anywhere in, in on these uh, yellow lines, the price could potentially reverse. So now it is on the way up. So it could actually reverse at 0 0.9012 area, 9021 area, 9030 area, and 9042 area. Right. So, but then if we look at each one of it and we evaluate, we can actually evaluate it um, by looking to the left. Okay. So, if I were to look to the left on this one here, yes, you've got some correction, some correction here. All right. Um, then, if I look at this, this one here is your 50, uh, 38.2, 50, 61.8%, 78.6%. Now, the, I'm in particularly very interested in this line here, this one here, okay? So if I uh, change the line color here to this, just so that you know this is different, why am I very interested into this one? Because number one, it it is a line that is onto a group of candles that go sideways, not only here, but also here. Okay, but then it was here that the fall was a little bit more drastic with a single bearish candle. And I like that area to consider. This is the worst case scenario, of course. That means the worst case scenario that price would actually go up. It would probably go up another 20 plus pips or so before it makes that uh, reversal at the 90, 20, 90, 30 area. Okay, so the 90, 30 area is closed before 9030. Um, it will be the 9020 psychological number. So I will mark the 9020. Okay. So now I have this area here, right? Now I'll get rid of that yellow line, that yellow line, get it out. So you know that this is your 38.2%. Now I've marked these two now here, and this would actually be a much more powerful area uh, for reversal, either the 9020 area, or it goes up a little bit more and it, uh, it reverses there. So we've got a reversal zone, which is called a potential reversal zone. In, uh, if you want to um, abbreviate it, you could say it's the PRZ zone, which stands for potential reversal zone in all this area right here. And it's not so much as well um, in terms of about 20 to 30 pips more to the upside worst case scenario. But then if you look at it now itself on the one hour chart, it's just looking like it's already started to reverse, but we'll just leave the market to do its thing. Uh, we will make out a box right here. And you know that that's your PRZ zone. 
I can take that one away as well. And you know that that's your PRZ zone right there. Okay, using Fibonacci itself, you get a good idea. If we go into the four hour chart, you could see that that's your reversal zone, just in case, right? You've also got areas of very strong resistance right here, area resistance. So we are still in a safe sort of zone uh, where we, uh, you know, we just want to make that 30 pips first and see how the uh, price has respected or not certain areas. Okay, so that in within that area of um, uh, the, let me just, Euro GBP, we have got a 899, yeah, 8990 to 8960. So we've got the 30 pips window right there. So I have put in your cell there, the yellow zone. Yeah, sell at 8990, and then you are take profiting at 8960. It's only about 30 pips or so, but the 30 pips, oops. The 30 pips or so is a good warm up type uh, trade just to measure the strength of the Euro GBP, whether it's to the downside or the upside. But now at this moment of time, um, it has been alerted more downside move of the Euro, especially because the GBP is really moving to the upside. Okay. All right, guys, so far, any questions at all? Any questions? You guys are okay? No questions. Hi there, guys. Uh, we've got more people coming in. Okay, good. Um, any questions, guys? No questions. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, of course, of course we can, funny. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at Go. Yeah, so, um, so far, if you guys are clear with the trend signal uh, on the Euro GBP, yeah, if you guys are clear. As you can see, you know, it's it's already making that head away downwards. And uh, if we go onto the daily chart as well, you can see that it still maintain itself on the on the um, uh, bearish candle right there. Okay, so it's still looking good to the downside. Okay, so we just want to do that. And uh, to prove to you guys that uh, I have made my analysis on that, and hence the reason I have traded myself on two lots on that one there, that means $20 per pip. Okay, so this is a real account. This is Arantes' real account, and uh, you know, I can show you all the history as well of all the trades uh, that has taken place uh, so far. Still on a positive, uh, so it's it's doing quite well at the moment. So, um, but then we want to look at how this uh, Euro GBP fare at this moment of time, and uh, we'll just leave it as it is. Hence the reason I'm giving you guys a trade signal with no uh, crazy pip amount like 100, 150, and all especially at the beginning of a trend beginning of a trend let's say euro gbp to the downside i would like to just warm up uh, with 20 30 pips or so and then we trade in stages if it does actually then prove to be more and more bearish and then we can actually enter and re-enter trades as well okay good all right so um fun me let's uh, have some fun with gold yeah so let's just look into gold. Now gold has actually um, done really well actually to the upside and uh, we have had a signal with uh, buying a uh, buying the gold with an ABCD pattern like this one here. Okay, and uh, it has reached its area right there. So that was the entry area roughly 1944 and then 2024 was uh, before 2024 we exited as well. So that's uh, good. That has already finished that opportunity was uh, great. Now we need to evaluate it further. So we go on to the daily chart. And if we look into everything that uh, we can see at this moment of time, it's just looking very, very bullish. Uh, it is actually trading above all the um, EMAs and everything else is looking really smooth as well. And this is on the daily chart. Okay, so, so far, so good onto the upside, it's still onto the upside. So let's just look at the threats. Let's look at downside possibility now. Uh, it's not to burst your bubble or to make you, um, you know, fearful of the market, but we always need to, if we're looking at an upward trend, we want to also understand that 
what could actually stop this uptrend? Where are the obstacles? Where are the resistance level? We need to always ask questions, okay? It's the same if you are selling it as well, you want to know where the support is. You want to always be um, thinking laterally in both scenarios, okay? If it goes up, of course, you've got all your TPs and everything set up, but what about your stop loss level? How? how would it actually hit your stop loss level? How much would it actually reverse, let's say, okay? So for gold, um, as I have shared with you guys before, um, we have got a very nice cup and handle pattern, okay? And that cup and handle pattern is doing really well, meaning that the upward type movement, uh, the bullishness have actually broken out of the mouth of the cup, which actually means that it's got only more movement expected to go up and up and up and up. Okay, that is for the goal at this moment. I mean, uh, before this, like let's say a couple of weeks back and all that, I wouldn't be saying what I've just said just now because it hasn't actually broken out of the um, mouth of the cup area, but now it has, it's giving even more confidence to traders and investors to actually um, buy more gold. And uh, with the buying of the gold, usually uh, it has correlation with the cryptos as well, um, with uh, commodity currency as well and other commodities. Now with that, sometimes when it is going at this rate for gold, um, it is also a warning sign of some more trade tensions that may actually arise or something geopolitical or something not, uh, not very good for the economy or geopolitically or politically, all right? So now if I'm looking at the screen of Erantis new screen, it is looking at more futures slip ahead of tomorrow's job report. Okay, so um, market is preparing themselves tomorrow's NFP as well. You guys uh, don't forget about NFP. It's got very high volatility on the day uh, for tomorrow. So join me on the webinar again tomorrow. It's uh, going to be quite interesting. Uh, so we are looking at, um, you know, uh, more and more movement to the upside. You know, the reason I say that as well for gold is really interesting because you know how we are, especially myself, looking at uh, to the left, to the left. Now, we don't have much left to look at for gold, okay, which is uh, both good and bad, okay? Uh, bad meaning we don't have a point of reference so much. Good meaning uh, they may be no, not much hindrance or, um, or uh, resistance that we can actually follow up on because there's just no resistance. So that is a sign that uh, if it decides to go upward, the momentum could actually be quite high to the upside. Okay, so that actually means bigger boys, hedge funds, uh, all that, they might be, they might start to make their own price now uh, of where they want to reverse, where they want to rest in their buying, where they want to take profit. So, um, in other words, from the mouth of the cup onwards, maybe new uh, set of uh, history historical data. So there will not be uh, historical data, it will be future data that the traders and investors are building on from now on. So it's going to be very, very interesting trading goal on both counts, on online, on the platform, as well as physical goal. Because a lot of physical goal traders at this moment of time, they're getting very, very excited to buy, but they are not getting excited to buy physical gold or to buy gold because price is going up. No, they are actually buying because of this whole new playground at the very top uh, of the chart. You see the chart at this moment of time, we've got very new playground because when you look to the left, is almost nothing clear. So this is always a very good time. It is exactly like how Bitcoin started. Okay, so Bitcoin started similarly like this, where you've got not much to look to the left, and then boom, it went up. So now gold is building a new play field. And I feel that it is potentially one of the best time 
to actually invest in gold. And investors are all thinking alike and they are all actually doing that. So um, with that, uh, we need to also monitor what goes on in the state, uh, especially from now, uh, whether it is tensions, COVID situation, okay and also its economic situation with stimulus with jobs with employment with everything so these three things that goes on in the states the more negative they are the better for us gold traders to actually put it into gold and buy okay so these are what uh, these are things that investors and traders are actually literally talking about on TV at this moment of time, as I can see as well, I'm looking at Dow Jones futures prices up 0.05%. I'm looking at gold prices, uh, you know, up crazy percent. Um, and uh, we are also looking at, uh, remember, if, if you guys remember, we have talked a little bit about GBP correlation with gold. And this has actually happened, I think has been happening for almost nine months in a row. Okay, and I've noticed that co positive correlation between GBP and gold. And all of a sudden, we're looking at loads and loads of appreciation of, uh, of um, GBP uh, driven by the Bank of England, especially its rates and not really economy and everything else. It's mainly because of the balancing, uh, the banking uh, structure needs to balance the rates and doing all kinds of uh, things. So it is, it needs to do that. And uh, it's giving more positive thing, but it's not that positive realistically, but the bank is giving positive words. The bank is wanting to pump in money, print more money and apply quantity quantitative easing into the UK, okay? So that is then suddenly it is coinciding with the movement of potential growth of gold. So we've got lots of opportunities, okay? So a lot of buying, pound crosses, of course, and a lot of uh, buying for the gold. And what will then follow is silver. So if gold is going to do that, pound is going to you know, pave the way, then gold is going to correlate with the pound as well. And then you've got your commodity currencies. But usually what follows behind gold will be silver as well. So you're looking at gold, silver, commodity currencies, um, on the upside, okay? So this is basically it. And uh, with that, I mean, with looking at goals, movements and all that, um, historically, not, not in the far um, history, um, but uh, recent history, we look into Bitcoin as well. So um, goals movement, when it's actually correlated to the pound, and then you see them, uh, you know, um, positively correlated and moving to the upside, then it gives a lot of um, boost to the cryptocurrencies as well, mainly Bitcoin. Now with Bitcoin BTC versus the US dollar, we see a very nice pattern to the upside as well. Uh, suddenly it all correlates, you see, and it's, uh, it's uh, connecting the dots as well from one asset to the other asset. So we should write uh, the opportunities here. Okay, so that is basically for gold. All right, guys, questions? Any questions so far? You guys okay? All right, now at this moment of time when I look at the heat map again, you know, it is still showing the same thing about Euro GBP, yeah, still to the downside. It's a daily chart as well. So we'll leave it as it is uh, for now on the Euro GBP selling position. Uh, we want to also look into more selling of Euro USD, but uh, we want to look at, uh, this is called the neckline right here of the double top pattern, okay? Um, if the prices uh, price now, this is based on the four hour chart for Euro USD does actually fall and cut this uh, neckline, we call it, okay, this trend line that I've drawn in red and comes downwards and then it bounces back up to the point where it broken out from, uh, then you've got a very, very high potential of a very big fall. Okay, so we're just waiting on that at the moment for more Euro uh, falling going on. So let's just uh, wait and see for that one. Um, 
USDCHF, I've uh, done a pending uh, sort of order. I've not uh, on a sell. So I've uh, applied a sell stop. But at this moment of time, as you can see, the price stopped there exactly as it fallen. It did a reversal on the dot of the 1950 psychological level. So it's not touched my, um, it's not triggered my sell stop as yet, which is good. Uh, so as usual, I wouldn't sell at 90.50 anywhere. I would sell about 10 pips below 90.50, which is 90.40. So 90.40 was my sell pending order price. Uh, take profit, um, 8.960. I think that is my profit. Yeah, a 9.60. Okay, then you want to use the um, one to one risk to reward ratio as well. Okay, so that's for USDCHF. Now goal is clear. Yeah, fund me you okay with goal so far. Okay, and the Eurocad. Eurocad has been really nice uh, with the upward type movement. We have got the double uh, ABCD bullish pattern. It hit all TPs from TP1 to TP3. I think it's got about 270. Yes, 270 pips uh, TP hit on that one for the Eurocad. Now, it, it was the same sort of principle with the Eurocad whereby um, the heat maps and various other tools that I'm using has actually alerted me a very early trend to the rise of Euro uh, at the time. And then it hit all the TPs and then now it started to reverse. Uh, so it's the same for the Euro GBP alert as well. The nature of the alert for uh, more selling for Euro GBP uh, seem to be quite early as well, but um, technically it's giving loads of good um, hints of the downward type movement for Euro GBP. Okay, so that's for Euro CAT. Um, Euro JPY, I don't see anything there at this moment of time, not just yet. Uh, I'm looking for opportunity based on uh, movements, uh, volume, liquidity, and trend clarity. Okay. Ah, the other thing as well, which I uh, didn't manage to actually share with you guys is auto charters. I've got several programs uh, or software that I actually use. So I'm subscribed to them all and I get some, some I get like, um, you know, uh, special access uh, onto it. So I want to share with you guys as well. Give me a second, auto chartist. Login, okay. Yep, of course, we can take a look at uh, GBP, JPY. GBP, JPY, all right. Okay, so it's the same old GBP crosses, uh, it's on the upside. Uh, let's just look at the daily chart first. You can see that, yes, on the upside, you can see this candles, but uh, you could see that there may be a chance of reversal. If we're looking at a daily chart, you see all that uh, spike, it looks like spiked hair right there, uh, all these wicks pointing upwards, needle-like thing. When they are all pointing upwards and you've got a cluster of candles, it usually uh, signals a potential reversal because it couldn't, it got exhausted with the move to the upside. Site. When you look to the left, it's quite simple and clear as well as giving you the resistance. So you uh, mark the highest body right there as well. And you can see that it may be creating a double top. So we don't know yet. Now this is this just uh, signals me that okay, even though I'm hearing all the GBP crosses, yes, it's great uh, to buy and all that. But when we look at it technically, maybe it's just it is still on the upside, but it is not the right location for your buy just yet. It's not the right timing and it's not the right location for your buy. So that's it. Maybe it is still on the upside, but not just yet for you to enter the market for the GBP. Okay. So um, with that, uh, I like to always look at risk side of it. As you can see, 138.96, uh, you go up a little bit, that will be your 139.00. You go down a little bit, it will be your 138.80. So why not we lay out all the risk first, okay? Um, 139.00, let's say, okay? Psychological levels, yeah, 139.00. That's there, no, not very far away from there. 139 and then got 140. 
the psychological level. Okay, there you go. So, okay, we've got the 140 area. Uh, a little bit downwards, 13900. Okay, we'll just leave, leave it at, at, as, as it is so like that, and we go down to your four hour chart. See what's going on. We just got loads of candle cluster here, which actually means that we need to respect this area. Um, you can draw an extra line on the highest top right there. Okay, bring that one down. So you've got all these lines here. If I look at it, see your resistance, and then you've got this area here. Oh, we've got a lot of concentration of support, 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 but like a like a sideways type movement. Um, what else? Uh, some resistance right there. Beautiful move on the upside right here. So that means 140 and above has got good support area as well. So 140 point. And then you've got great support that area as well to the upside. Um, and then some resistance to the downside some more great resistance to the downside on that. So that actually shows me that this area has been drawn quite well. You know, it's been, it's been good that we've drawn all these lines here. So all we need to do is lay out a box here, okay? From 1400 area to here, this is your no trading zone. Uh, so that's your PRZ basically. And true enough, it is actually reversing at this moment of time. As you can see on the four hour chart, we've got a bit of a reversal going on. Uh, so what is the, um, is there a reason for the reversal based on indicators? Maybe what we can then do is to look at your stocks. Now see the stochastic here on the four hour chart. Let's look at it. Uh, we have got, let's say you got the peak right here, right? Or, or the current price is here, got this peak. Let's mark this peak, okay? This peak is for that peak right there. This current price is somewhere here, okay? Or let's see. Okay, something there, right? So if we look at it, uh, we can see probably change it to yellow, be more visible, okay? So from that peak here to somewhere around there, that is an upward type slope of the yellow line, correct? Or yellow trend line that I've just drawn. Um, then if we look at this one here to where it is, it's a downward type slope. So because of this slope, now this is overall an uptrend, okay? But then because of the divergence between, this is what it's called divergence, whereby you have got an opposite slope, the slope that is going up on the price itself, but the slope is going down on the stochastic. This slope and this slope does not match. It is not an upward slope here, it's a downward slope, but then this slope here is an upward slope. So these two don't match, so that means it is a divergence. Because it is a divergence, it is telling you that there may be a reversal due. Reversal of what? Reversal of the trend. The existing trend right there is to the upside, as you can see, upward, 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 right? But then because of the divergence, there is a potential correction that we need to be aware of. So at this stage, definitely not put any entry of a buy or even sell just until we are sure. So usually what happens is that we need at least two candles downwards. You see, this is one and this is just building up. After the third candle to the downside, then you know that this could actually be the peak right there and the reversal has actually happened. Now, a little bit too soon, okay, to talk about total reversal, but it does actually look like that. Uh, so GBP against JPY, very, very tricky at this moment of time, mainly because all GBP crosses going up. Um, so we need a strong enough reason why is it going down um, compared to the JPY, okay? All right, give me a second, guys. Let me just check. Hi there, Ms. Palani, how are you doing? Yes, uh, most of the GBPs are on the upside at this moment of time. Yeah, most of the GBPs. But like now we're talking about GBP, JPY, uh, it is 
starting to reverse at this moment of time. Uh, so we want to be careful with the GBP JPY. We can take a look at GBP USD, okay? Uh, and then we can we can evaluate it. Give me a second, yeah? We'll talk about this one and then we go on to GBP USD. So um, this is GBP NZD. Let's go to GBP USD as well. Okay. Right. So I've got GBP USD here and gbp jpy as we said just now okay okay so that's gbp jpy there is a bit of a reversal potential so i think it might actually reverse we are at exactly the price at 138 uh, 79 just now, which is very close to the 13880 psychological level. So it is time for it to reverse anyway, if we are looking into it. Uh, that is for GBP JPY. Now for GBP, um, but GBP JPY, even though it's, you know, on the way down or something like that, this is still reversal. So we don't want to sell too much if we think that is falling as well, because the trend is still on the upside overall. Okay, for GBP JPY. Now let's look into GBP USD. I've also shared with you um, the software. Give me a second. Uh, there's several uh, program software that I use just to look into trend and to be able to pick out uh, the right pair to trade as well. Uh, so give me a second. I just want to uh, log in into the, I want to log in into into auto chartist uh, so that I can share what auto chartist things or uh, what are the signals that auto chartist are giving out. Auto chartist trader. It's a bit too slow. I will not take much of your time. Uh, probably we'll just forget it for now. Uh, give me a second. Auto chart is. Okay, forget that for now. Uh, let me just go on to the other ones. AMA6. Okay. US study as well. Yeah, give me a second, family. We'll go into that. We'll look into uh, GBP USD first as well. Um, at this stage, it is still strong on the downside for Euro GBP, okay, for both sessions, the Asian session as well as the European American session. Uh, is still on the downside. Euro GBP really strong. Uh, the the one for the buy at the moment is GBP CAD. GBP CAD seem to be quite clear, uh, but we will look into uh, we will look into GBP USD first, and I'll give you my opinion on what's going on. Uh, let's look. Uh, I usually just look into the daily chart first, okay? Uh, then I will go down to lower time frame. So here, for example, if I go and clear out everything, GBP USD, um, as you can see, the price itself is at 3162. So um, as it goes up and up and up, it'll bump into the 3180 psychological level where it could potentially reverse at the 3180 area. Okay, but I want to look into this one much more. At this moment of time, the daily chart uptrend really strong because we've got the ADX. ADX, uh, if it is the blue line above the level 25, that means that the trend that you're looking at is really strong. Now, if I start A point from here and my B point, let's say the highest point right here, that means my C point is here, okay? So if I pull my Fibonacci from A all the way up to B, around here, I can see that my 38, give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. So it's minimum 38.2 on this here. So this, is, this could be my C point, okay? All 
right? So if I were to draw this A here, B here, and my C is here, that means that I'm expecting a more movement to the upside as high as this area here, which is 3672 area, okay? So let's take that one out. Now, we need to look into the daily chart and see that if this were to go up and up and up, what are the challenges? Now, the challenge I see is this one here, okay? This area here, okay? Which is also the end of a bullish mother candle right there. So you see it's a, it, the, the price now at 3165 is exactly at the start of a mother candle opening price, okay? So here, for example, if I were to measure from here to here, there is still some potential of buy. You see, the, this distance itself on the daily chart from here right up to here, that is 168 pips. That is a lot, okay? So that means there is a potential, more buying power. There are some buying uh, potential, buying power for GBP USD, but we're looking at a daily chart but you guys need to also go down to the four hour and then the one hour chart as well to see whether or not from the current price on the four hour chart, can we see, uh, let me just, on the four hour chart, it is still upward movement, very strong. On the one hour chart, the strength is not as strong as a four hour and the daily chart. So let's focus on the four hour as well. Let's look at what's going on. Okay, that zone right there, that location there is for the daily uh, chart. Okay, for those who, who can wait a little bit longer, they wanna buy, they can wait and, and, and trade here. That means buying above 30, uh, 33, uh, 27, and then take profit before 36, 72. That is their area, their zone. We wanna find the zone for us now on the four hour chart. So on the four hour chart, you need to zoom out, zoom in. Now, this is the problem with the four hour chart. Uh, we are at a price where it could also reverse. You see, there's a lot of resistance here, right? So uh, what we need to be careful of is this area here, okay? 13132. So we hope that the price wouldn't go under 3132 and below. If it does come under this blue line here, let me make it in red. then we have got um, a reversal expected as well if it comes under this 31, 32 and go lower, lower to 1.3, 1.20, then we've got a threat, okay? We've got a bit of a problem where uh, we cannot actually think of the buying at that time. But now, so far, it is above this peak. So far, still all right. But what I would like to look at is whether or not if I go to the left, can I find a very bullish mother candle? Now, the answer to that is yes. You see, there's a bullish candle. Now, the price is exactly on a bullish candle that is about 328 pips long, which again tells me, yes, we have a chance for buying. Okay, so I am actually uh, thinking that 3164, let's say, it's still okay for a buying, for a buying to take place. Um, but if uh, those who are a bit conservative, maybe you want to buy only at three one ninety or three two ten. So it's entirely up to you of how reserve how much you want to wait. So you can wait um, either for price to go at three one ninety. I will just write it down here. Okay. You got two choices, okay? How much uh, conservative you want to be a trader? Three one ninety. Okay, so I'll take this one out. Or three to ten. Okay, so you got two choice of where you want to buy, or safer to buy because if not, then we might look into some reversal. Okay. So you've got two red lines here. You can buy at 3190 uh, or 3210, okay? Then you can actually take profit, you know, 3310 area right here, okay? But then if price were to go up and up and up and then 
go above the 3327 area here, then you've got more chances of it going upwards. But my advice is to take profit here first around this area because there is a, a bit of a reversal right there. Okay, and then continue your journey later on for buy. So you are trading in stages at the moment. Okay, so these are your area you can enter. Okay, 3210, let's say. Um, I would take profit 3310, so I will adjust this one at 3310. Okay, so this is for GBP USD. Okay, so if you are entering at 3210, you can take profit 3310. So it, it depends if you want to also respect this area right here, because this is also a resistant area right there. Okay, that one there is at 3270. So even if you are buying at 3210, let's say you put a pending order, a buy stop, okay, at 3210 then your, uh, you can do a short-term one at 3270 uh, to actually take profit. That is your 60 pips right there. So that is something you can actually do. But this is roughly the map for you to look at uh, what you can actually do here. Okay, Mr. Barney, is that clear for you on GBP USD? Uh, QE stands for quantity quantitative easing fund me, which actually means that they print more money and they want to make the people in the country think that the economy is good, but actually it's just a printing of money, uh, which will actually increase people's confidence and people's confidence will be um, creating more buying. Then that's why the currency will go up. Yeah, okay, not because of the economy. All right, so there you go. <laughs> So far, okay, you guys, Mr. Palani, you're clear with that? Okay. All right. So, um, US 30, yeah? Okay, let's see. US 30, we talked a little bit about it. Uh, it uh, see, we've, we found a location of the buy as well, remember? Uh, we respected this resistant area. You can buy from the 26736 area upwards and take profit at the 25596. So it has actually gone up quite a bit. Uh, now it's at 27179. The target is 27596 area there, that blue line there. Okay, let me just make sure you can see. There you go, yeah. So uh, it went past this area of resistant and also now that area right there uh, has gone higher coming back down here. So uh, it's also created that sort of dodgy thing downward. So it means that it's exhausted to the downside, but I think it's got a lot of potential to go up again. Okay, that's for your US 30. There you go. This one's uh, rather simple. It is actually still appreciative to the upside, US 30. All right, good. Okay, guys, I think that's all I have uh, for you guys. If you've uh, got no more questions, I guess tomorrow NFP day, we can actually discuss more and look into more trading opportunities. Okay. Um, did I miss anything? US30, GBPUSD, we've seen it. JPY, we've seen it as well. Um, Euro GBP as well. Okay, that's it, guys. Um, all right, so... If no more questions, uh, I think we can uh, end the session for tonight and uh, we will meet up again tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, NFP day as well. And I think we've got some more trading opportunities tomorrow as well to discuss. Okay, <laughs> no problem, Peter. Thank you. Okay, guys, take care. Thank you so much. And uh, we will be able to send you the recordings as well. Okay, so with that, I thank you so much and uh, have a lovely evening and we will see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.